Hello guys, if you are looking for a wonderful preparation schedule for cat which tells you what you should do on a week by week basis and a day by day basis, go no further than to I am. So just check out the description here. It's a fabulous link. Click that and then just see what variant of it works for you. Download this, stick it somewhere and you're good to go. Best wishes. Sales of products, the horizontal bars in the above diagrams or the below diagram represent 2020 aggregate sales in rupees million of a company for the different subcategories of its products. The top four subcategories, bookcases, chairs, furnishings, and tables, belong to the furniture product category, the top four. The bottom four product subcategories, accessories, copiers, machines, and phones, these four, belong to the technology product category. So this is furniture, this is technology. Well, all other product categories belong to the office supply product category. So everything from binders to suppliers. This is office supplies. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine here, four here, four here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, the numbers add up. Nice. For each of the product subcategories, there's a vertical line indicating sales of the corresponding subcategory in 2019. So bookcases had, say, 1.9 in 2019 and 2.2 in 2020. The bar represents 2020 numbers, the line represents 2019 numbers. Lovely. Furniture, office supply, technology. I jump in there's nothing much to figure out it's only solving from here on in the total sales in rupees million of 2019 from products and office supplies category this is office supply and we want 2009 we want to add nine different numbers the pain in the neck we've got to do what you've got to do this is 3.5 3.7 maybe 3.65 art this is 0.5 0.4, maybe a little more than 0 0.5, 0 0.4, but I'm offsetting that. Appliances to 1.9. And envelopes, we're doing 2019 numbers, envelopes is 0.4. Fasteners is 0.2. Labels is 0.25. Paper is 1.5. Storage, this is a significant category. Storage is going to be 4.3. Supplies is 1.1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers. Add everything up. We should be close to one of these four and then we are through. This 5 stays as it is. 1 plus 3, 4, 9, 11, 13, 17, 26, 30, 37, 7, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 4, 13, 13.75, 13.5 is close enough and no other choice comes that close. This is the answer we are looking for. Just quick check, 3.7, 0 0 0.4, 1.9, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 1.5, 4.3, 1.1, yeah. The addition, I'm more confident. Just writing the numbers would have been a pain. 13.5 works fine. The percentage increase in sales and furniture category from 2019 to 20. So 19 to 20, 2019 numbers. This is 1.9 bookcases. Chairs would be 6.2. Furnishings would be 2.05 tables would be 4.4 just to take a punt uh, this seems like a I would guess the answer to be uh, the four categories these two practically no change those two some change some, some five percent six percent that's the range I'm looking for uh, hopefully that's the ballpark. These two don't change. There's a big category. There's some change. There's some change. So it's not one percent. I would guess this, but let's find out anyway. Right? 
point five, two plus four, six plus nine, fifteen, five, one, two, eight, ten, fourteen, fourteen point five five. The two thousand twenty numbers. This is two point two five. Six point two becomes seven. Two point zero five becomes two point one. Four point four becomes four point five. Fine. Two plus three. Two plus one. Three plus five. Eight. Six. Eight. Fifteen. Fifteen point eight five. Fourteen point five five to fifteen point eight five. Increase of one point three over fourteen point five five. Little less than ten percent going for eight percent. You can guess. You can take a punt. It is more than one. It's definitely not twenty or twenty-five. Therefore, eight percent. How many subcategories had sales of four million or more in two thousand nineteen and registered an increase in sales in excess of twenty-five percent in two thousand twenty? More than four million in two thousand nineteen. This is a four million line. 2019 number being more than 4 million shares shares you know, excess of 25% shares goes from 6.1 to 7 and that's not that's not 25% 25% of 6 is 1 and a half that's not the answer tables straight away we can forget about it binders doesn't even feature this storage storage goes from 4.35 to 5.1 four to five is 25 percent is not 25 percent accessories does not qualify copiers copiers is interesting 3.6 to 4.6 3.65 to 4.6 very interesting copiers is 3.65 to 4.6 might that be so it's something that I want to keep in mind. I want to revisit this copiers before we jump in. It is little more than 3.5. That looks like 4.6. 3.65 to 4.6 is so close, dicely close to 25%. So we'll have have another little go at it. No, no, no. I don't have to worry about this. My 2019 number has to be more than 4 million. I don't have to worry about uh, about copiers. Lucky, lucky. So the only thing I have to worry about now is phones because machines has declined. You don't have to worry. Phones has gone from 5.8 to 7.6. An increase of 1.8 over 5.8. That's more than 25%. Phones definitely features. I don't have to worry about machines, copiers. Uh, paper doesn't qualify. Chat doesn't qualify. Only one division, which is phones. I made a mistake and I was thinking about copiers. Looking at the 4 million mark for 2020. The 4 million rupee number is for 2019. 4 million or more in 2019. The vertical line should be out beyond this. The, the, the bar should be much higher. The only number that qualifies is phones. 5.8 to 7.6 is a more than 25% increase. 5.8 to 7.6 is a 1.8 increase. 1.8 by 5.8 is more than 1 fourth. The improvement index for a category is the maximum percentage increase in sales. From 2090 to 2020, among any of its subcategories, the correct order of categories in increasing order of this improvement index, maximum percentage index from among its four categories. Let's do this. So, maximum percentage increase for say furniture is going to be either this number, this 1.9 to 2.2, this number. Is six point one five to seven. So point eight five by six point one five, or point three by one point nine. Three by nineteen or point eight five by six point one five. Both the ballpark of maybe fifteen percent. So furniture around fifteen percent. Then look, look, let's look at binders. Binders are lots of categories. We need to eliminate. Uh, in, in office supply, binders is high, art is small, even at the percentage. This is a decline, I don't have to worry about this, very small, even at the percentage it could be high, but it looks small, because it's too dicey, I, I don't want to place anything on fasteners, 
labels is also low paper is 0.5 by 1.5 33% storage is 0 0.5 0 0.6 0.7 by 4.4 that's less than 33% this is a bigger number bigger share bigger percentage chain supplies are smaller paper gives us 33% might this be 33% probably not so fasteners I don't want to base a judgment based on that binders let's look at because that's the only thing we have not checked this is 3.6 to 5.3 that's 3.6 to 5.3 that's an increase of 1.7 by 3.6 that's probably more than 33% 33% is one third. One third of one three point six is one point two. So one point seven by three point six is, is one point eight by three point six is fifty percent. So this is close to forty percent or more than forty percent of a supply. The biggest performing category. Accessories. So I don't this number is less than this. I can eliminate this. I can eliminate this between these two. So in this we are going from three point 0 0.5 to 4.4 so 1.35 by 3.05 here we are going from 5.8 to 7.6 1.8 by 5.8 this chunk is bigger definitely 3.05 to 4.4 is a sharper switch than this so 1.35 by 3.05 1.35 by 3 is roughly 45 percent right. 1.7 by 3.6 is also high the smallest is furniture then come these two but now i'm worried 1.7 so let me just redo these numbers this is 5.3 this is 3.65 maybe 3.65 to 5.3 so that's 1.65 by 3.6 165 by 360 into 100 right. 165 by 5 is 33 360 by 5 is 72 11 by 24 into 100 11 by 24 into 100 is, is nice so 11 by 24 goes 4 times 9 to 6 40 goes nearly six times is 45 percent so it's more than 45 percent this is probably less than 45 percent so if i had to put my stick my neck out i would say furniture first this number is more than 45. Oh, this is a pain i'm just going to check whether there's something just juicier popping out Appliances go from 1.9 to 3.1. Oh, I completely missed appliances. 1.9 to 3.1. The increase is 12 by 19, which is nearly two thirds. So this will kill you. This number is completely wrong. I don't have to worry about binders. I completely missed appliances. So this is high. So the order is furniture, technology, office supplies. Furniture. Technology office supply, which is choice D. That's the right answer. Yeah. I completely messed up the office supply number because appliances is through the charts. 1.2 by 1.9, which is nearly two thirds. That is way more than this. I, I was worried that it wouldn't be this close. 45 and 45 doesn't, it's too close. So I it's not swing on that small a decimal place. It would be easier to look at appliances and say we are through. This is nearly two thirds. Two thirds increase here. That's automatically higher than anything that can come here. Furniture, technology, office supply. Fine. Lovely. Uh, friends and strangers, friends, acquaintances, and strangers. I found this to be incredibly tough in the moment solving there. Now I made a series of mistakes. Um, Try to put together a solution which should be reasonable to to follow. But I must confess that uh, I made a made a mess of this. Fine. Anyway, I stand with this. Amuda, Bharatan, Chandra, Dinesh, Ezil, Funny, and Gautam. 
that is A, B, C, D, E, F and G, seven people are seven people in a town. Any pair of them could either be strangers, acquaintances or friends. All relationships are mutual. So if A and B are friends, A is B's friend, B is A's friend. So we don't have an issue where I think I'm his friend, but he doesn't think like that. All relationships are mutual. For example, if Amuda is a friend of Bardhan, then Bardhan is also a friend of Amuda. Similarly, if Amuda is a stranger to Bardhan, then Bardhan is also a stranger to Amuda. So there's no ghosting happening here. Partial information about the number of friends, acquaintances and strangers of each of these people among them is given in the table below. Nice. So far, so good. So Amuda has one acquaintance and four strangers. Amuda should have a relationship with six people. So one acquaintance and four strangers, that means it should be one. Each of, the, each of these rows should add up to six. Right. So this is two, this is three, this should be one. Gautam has a relationship with six people. 3 plus 2 is 5, this is 1, 6. The rest I don't think we can fill. Obviously, this is not the only piece of jigsaw. There should be more that's available. Let's, let's see what else is given. The following additional facts are also known. Amuda, Bharatan and Chandran are mutual strangers, which helps. Amuda, Dinesh and Fani are Edil's friends. Chandran and Gautam are friends. Every friend of Amuda is an acquaintance of Bharatan and every acquaintance of Bharatan is a friend of Amuda. Every friend of Bharatan is an acquaintance of Amuda and every acquaintance of Amuda is a friend of Bharatan. Both are just the same, flipped two ways. I think it's just a bit to throw us off our game a little bit. So let's, let's fill in whatever we know. Amuda, Bharatan and Chandran are mutual friends. I followed an approach where I thought I would draw links two ways. Establishing friends, strangers and uh, acquaintances. Uh, different forms of straight lines and curved lines and dotted lines it became too, consume, too confusing in the, in the exam hall. Uh, and then shifted to the table approach. What am I going to do? I'm going to say Amuda, Bharatan and Chandran are mutual strangers. For Amuda, Bharatan and Chandran are strangers. So let's put B and C here. For Bharatan, Amuda and Chandran are strangers, A and C. For Chandran, Amuda and Bharatan are strangers, A and B. Nice. Amuda, Dinesh and Fani are Edil's friends. So Edil's friends are A, D, F. Every time I put an entry, I'll put a corresponding entry. E and A are friends. A is E's friend. E is A's friend. A and E and D are friends. So D and D are friends. E and F are friends. F and D are friends. This helps. Chandran and Gautam are friends. So C and G, G and C. But it really helps us simplify because once we mark this out, the next thing that we can do is say, hey, all the friends have been accounted for, all friends have been accounted for, only one one. So funny is not friends with anybody apart from Edil. Gautam is not friends with anybody apart from Chandran. So we can close this out, not worry about this anymore. Right? We fill this much and then we'll, we'll try to keep adding layer after layer to this, include this. Both of these are practically the same constraint, include this and then tweak this around. Right. So far so good, we've done all of this. Every acquaintance of Amuda is an acquaintance of Bharatan and every acquaintance of Bharatan, sorry, every friend of Amuda is an acquaintance of Bharatan and every acquaintance of Bharatan is a friend of Amuda. So to start with, this E should come here. This one should be one, this should be one, this is four. The numbers have to mirror each other. Right? This is useful because now Amudan has one friend, done. Bharatan has one friend, which is not A, which is not C, because A and C are accounted for here, which is not E, because E is an acquaintance. We have D, F, G remaining. F and G have been accounted for or Bharatan's friend, the one friend that Bharatan has is D. So I put, once we put a D here, we should put a B here. Lovely. So this D sits here. This is super helpful because we have now knocked this off, knocked this off, knocked this off, knocked this off completely. Right? Let's build on this. So B should be friends with D. This implies D should be friends with B as well. So this is a D goes here, B goes here. This will be D and an A would sit here. Nice, wonderful. Let's see if we can, we can build further on this. Right. 
So this automatically means we can fill out the four numbers here. A is friends with E and D, but the other four you should be acquaintances. B, C, F, G. So F and G we can put. So on both F and G, we would add A. B is acquaintance strangers with A and C, and then D and D get accounted for. Once again, F and G. So A, C, F, G. So this should be B, this should be B. That means this is accounted for completely. Gautam has only two people who are strangers to him. That is A and B. Gautam has one person who is friend with him. That is C. So A, B, C are accounted for. D, E, F are acquaintances. So I'm going to put D, E, F. So D and G are acquaintances. So this should be G. E and G are acquaintances. There should be a G here. F and G are acquaintances, there should be a G here. Nice. So this is 2 here, 2 here, that number 2 is there. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. That means this is complete, put a number 2 here. This is complete, put a number 2 here. A, B are accounted for, E, G are accounted for, C and F remain. So put C, F here. This, this 2 is also accounted for. I've put C and F here. So in C, I should put D. In F, again, I should put D. Lovely. So A, B, D go there. So this is complete. This is complete. This is complete. This is complete. A, D, F and B, G are here. A, B. E is already accounted for. D, F, G, A, D. F, B, G are there. C is not accounted for. So there goes a C here. If C is here, then E should be here. So now this is completely accounted for. This should be 2. This should be 3. This is done. This is done. A, B, D, E, that makes it 4. So this is 1. This is 1. A, B, D, E are accounted for. A, B, C, D, E are done. G is covered. F is missing. So this should be F. If this is F, there should be a, a C here. So this is accounted for, this is accounted for, this is accounted for. A is complete, B is complete, C is complete, D is complete, E is complete, F is also complete. This is 2, this is 3, which must mean G is also complete. This is complete, this is complete. So we fill the entire grid out. It seems uh, swimmingly easy. It was not at all this easy in the context and pressure of an examination thing. So we, the, the, the way of mapping here, we put A and E, then automatically we should put E and A. Every relationship is mutual. So you put A, B, one link, put, put B in front of A, mix with A, then A should go with B. So mix, put them together like that, then it should get simplified. So inch by inch, so just a quick recap. So B, C, F, G are strangers to A, A, C, F, G are strangers to B. So F and G here, F and G here, which automatically means A and B here, A and B here, which means this is complete, A, B, C are done, this is D, E, F here. If this is D, E, F here, in D we put a G, in E we put a G, in F we put a G, which means this is, these two add up to two, 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 complete, A, B, C is missing, D, E, G, C and F, this should be C and F. C and F go here, so in C there should be a D, in F there should be a D. And then we complete slowly. No, who sees acquaintance F? Now we have completed the grid. Once we complete the grid, answering question should be pretty straightforward. Who are Gautam's acquaintances? D E F. Dinesh, Ariel, and Fani. Which of these pairs share the same type of relationship? Bharadan, Chandran, B, C are strangers. Dinesh, Dinesh, Ariel, D, E are friends. So not this. Chandran and Ariel, C, E, C, E are strangers. Dinesh and Gautam, D, G are acquaintances. Not this. Amuda and Gautam. Amuda and Gautam are strangers. E and F, Eril and Fanny are friends, not this. 
Baradhan and Eril, B and E are acquaintances. Funny and Gautam, F and G are acquaintances. This work. Both are acquaintances. Once you've got the whole table just looking at that and answering the question. Very doable. Who is an acquaintance of Amuda? D. Dinesh. None. Who is an acquaintance of Chandran? Chandran's acquaintance F. Funny. None. How many friends does Edil have? Edil has three friends. A, D, F. Again, simple. How many people are either a friend or a friend of friend of Edil? Friend is A, D, F. That's in the bag. A's friend is E. B's friend is D. And F's friend is E again. So. How many are either a friend or a friend of a friend of of Edil? Edil has three friends A, D, F. A has E as a friend, B has D as a friend, F has E as a friend. So friend or friend of a friend. Give me a second. Of Edil. Edil has three friends A, D, F. A has E. A has E. D has B. And F has E. So A, D, F, and B. I made this beautiful mistake and I counted E also. And I said A, D, F, E, B. That doesn't work. Friend or a friend of a friend. That means I shouldn't be counting the person himself. So I marked five for this because I counted A, D, F, B, all right. And I counted E also because there's an E sitting here and an E sitting here. So I counted E as a friend of a friend of E, which is rather silly. So I should have counted only four. The answer is four. Raw materials. Let's have a look at this. Ganga, Kaveri and Narmada are three women who buy four raw materials, mango, apple, banana and milk and sell five finished particles. Finished products, not particles. Mango smoothie, apple smoothie, banana smoothie, mixed fruit smoothie and fruit salad. Table one gives information about the raw materials required to produce the five finished product. Mango smoothie is mango and apple. A banana smoothie is banana and apple. Apple smoothie is apple and, sorry. Mango and milk, apple and milk, banana and milk. Mixed fruit smoothie is everything. Mango, apple, banana and milk. And then fruit salad is mango, apple, banana, no milk. All four of them have milk. This one has no milk. This one has everything. One unit of a finished product requires one unit each of the raw materials mentioned in the second column. So to produce one mango smoothie, I need one unit of mango, one unit of milk. One apple smoothie, one unit of apple, one unit of milk. Brilliant. One unit of milk, mango, apple and banana cost five, three, two, one each. Milk is five, mango is three, apple is two, banana is one. Each unit of a finished product, but product is sold for a profit equal to Two times the number of raw materials. And I, I just hate these equations. Profit equal to two times the number of units. I want profit in either percentage terms or in rupee terms. Not number of units. So I, I was totally turned off by it. But then it says, for example, apple smoothie is ma made with two raw materials and will be sold for a profit of rupees four per unit. So it is two times the number of materials, that many rupees, that part is missing. I cannot say profit is two times the number of materials used. Profit cannot be four. Four of what? Is it four percentage? Four rupees, four dollars, four of what? There's a unit mismatch here, but we'll live with it because the explanation is being clear. Leftover raw materials are sold during the last business hour for a loss of one rupee per unit. The amount in rupees received from sales for each woman in each of the four business hours of the day is given in table two. 23, 19, 31, 21, 22, 21, etc., etc., etc. The raw materials left over are sold in the last hour. So this is not just sale. This is sale and leftover. That needs to be sold. Lovely. The following additional facts are known. No one except possibly Ganga sold any mango smoothie. Just one thing. Each woman sold either zero or one unit of any single finished product in any hour. So they don't sell two apple smoothies or two banana smoothies or two fruit salads. Each woman had exactly one unit each of two different raw materials as leftovers. No one had any banana leftover. Each of them had two of the other three. So, uh, milk, mango, 
apple milk and mango mango and apple milk and apple lovely so the crucial part here is accounting for this money this is the revenue so we need to figure out the selling price we know the cost of each of these we know the profit so we can find the selling price let's first attack that before we do anything else So milk and mango are 5 and 3 each. So cost is 5 plus 3, 8. Milk and apple are 5 and 2 each, 7. Milk and banana are 5 and 1, adds up to 6. Apple, mango, banana and milk put together, 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, 11. Mango, apple, banana, 3 plus 2 plus 1, 6. These three products have two raw materials each, a profit of 4, 4, 4. This one has four raw materials, has a profit of eight. This one has three raw materials, profit of six. So selling price is 12, 11, 10, 19, 12. Eight plus four, seven plus four, six plus four, 11 plus eight, six plus six. These numbers are super crucial. We will take these numbers and then make all kinds of inferences based on their revenue numbers that we see. And so each unit is prof for profit equal to two times the number of raw materials. This we know. So we can figure this out. The cost going in we know, so we can find the selling price. And this is super useful because the moment we see that next table, in the first business hour you make 23. 23 cannot be bought by, got by selling only one. 23 among these is 12 plus 11. So it's either smoothie, mango smoothie and apple smoothie or apple smoothie and fruit salad. One of the, two. In the second hour, Ganga makes 21. It is only 11 plus 10. The third R Ganga makes 29, which is only 19 plus 10. So based on these numbers, we can figure out pretty much exactly what was sold in the first hour, second hour and third hour. We still are in trouble with the fourth hour because there's some leftovers and leftover dynamics come into the picture, which is a pain in the neck. So we'll come to the leftover dynamic later on, but we know that we can figure out exactly what was sold. So Kaveri in the first hour sold one mixed fruit smoothie. Kaveri in the second hour should be 12 plus 10. This plus this or this plus this. It couldn't have been 12 plus 10 like this because nobody except Ganga possibly makes mango smoothie. So in the second hour, it should have been fruit salad and banana smoothie. 30 should be 19 plus 11 mixed fruit smoothie and an apple smoothie. Narmada makes 31, 19 plus 12. Only this 12, not that 12 because only Ganga can make mango smoothie. 21 is 11 plus 10. Apple smoothie and banana smoothie. 23 is 11 plus 12. This 11 and this 12. So we can make several inferences quite clearly for almost all of these. We're going to have some more trouble dealing with this. Fine, but we'll come to that later on. But each of these numbers more or less gives a unique solution because they can be caught by combining only in some combination. 22 cannot be 11 plus 11 because nobody sells two units of something in a given hour. So 22 is only 12 plus 10. There's only this for Kaveri and Narmada. The only place where ambiguity can come is this 23 could be 11 plus 12, either these two or this and this. So in the first hour, Ganga definitely sold an apple smoothie. Her second item could have been a mango smoothie or a fruit salad. Both are possible. That's the only thing where we need to be switched on about. The rest kind of fall in place automatically. Brilliant. So the prices 5321, we've put them. The selling prices, we have them here. The business are sales units, we have them here. And so now the, 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 the leftover part, we still need to figure out. No one had any banana. Each one had exactly one unit leftover of two raw materials. And leftover raw materials are sold at a loss of one rupee per, uh, per item. Right? I'm going to go to the question straight away. What best can be concluded about the number of units of fruit salad sold in the first hour? In the first hour, so this is 12 plus 11. This is just 19. This is 19 plus 12. This is definitely fruit salad. Because the uh, Narmada cannot sell mango smoothie. Whereas this 12 plus 11, that 12 could have been smoothie or fruit salad. Both 12s are possible. So they're definitely one in, there could be a second one. One or two, that's the answer. The first 
atwal in ganga's case that could have come from mango smoothie or fruit salad whereas this is definitely fruit salad so one or two much of the following is necessarily true leftover narmada sold one unit of leftover milk kaveri sold one unit of leftover mangoes ganga did not sell leftover leftover we have got to now crack this leftover part first of all each woman had exactly one unit of two different raw materials as leftovers no one had any banana leftover so they could have had mango milk and mango milk and apple mango and apple that's the combination leftover raw materials were sold at a loss of 1 rupee per unit so if you sell milk and mango 5 plus 3 is 8 you get 6 rupees if you sell mango plus apple 3 plus 2 is 5 you get 3 rupees if you take milk and apple 5 plus 2 is 7 you get 5 rupees so your realization from selling leftovers is either 5 3 or 6 5 3 or 6 depending on what combo you're selling and so 5 3 or 6 so in the last hour each of them could have got minus 5 minus 3 or minus 6 than this or no leftovers and that could be the number itself and so minus 5 minus 3 Minus six, minus five, minus three, minus six. Each woman had exactly one unit of each of this, so there's no possibility of no leftover. So from each of these, this could be subtracted. For realizing how much they sold from the smoothies, the remaining coming from the leftover numbers. So this thirty could have been twenty-five plus five. It could have been twenty-seven plus three. It could have been twenty-four plus six. This twenty-seven could have been twenty-two plus five. 24 plus 3, 21 plus 6, and so on. Okay. So let's drill down and then say, hey, option one, 25 plus 5, 27 plus 3, this is uh, 24 plus 6. So what is the left over here? Is plus 5. Plus 5 is effectively milk and apple. Milk and apple is plus 5. Mango and apple is plus three, so this is plus three. So milk plus apple, mango plus apple. This will be milk and mango plus six. Now this is very interesting because now we have to say total revenue in the last hour, apart from leftovers, is twenty-five. Now, 25 cannot be brought in any combination. 12 plus 11 is 23. 10, 19 is not possible. 10 plus 15 is not possible. So this is out. 27 can we get? No, we can't get 27 either. 27 is also out. 12 plus 15 is not available. 11 plus 16 is not available. 10 plus 17 is not available. 19 plus 8 is not available. Dead. 24 is possible. 12 plus 12. So Ganga definitely sold. One mango smoothie and one fruit salad in the final hour, and finally had milk and mango remaining. Sold that for six to generate this thirty. That thirty can be obtained only as twelve plus twelve plus six. Now let's go to Kaveri. Twenty-two is possible. Twelve plus ten. Twenty-four. Twelve plus twelve. No, no. Twelve plus twelve is not possible because mango smoothie she cannot sell. So. Twenty-one is eleven plus ten. That's also possible. Number as seventeen is not possible. Sixteen is not possible. Nineteen, brilliant. So Narmada has sold one mixed fruit smoothie and has had mango and apple left over for the last hour. Uh, Ganga has sold one mango smoothie and one fruit salad in the last hour, and then had milk and mango left over. Kaveri, we don't know. There are two possibilities. Twelve plus ten could be fruit salad plus banana smoothie. Twelve plus eleven could be banana smoothie and apple smoothie, and then correspondingly something left over. So let's look at this. Narmada sold one unit of leftover milk. Narmada sold left her leftover is mango and apple, not milk. This is not true. Kaveri sold one unit of leftover mangoes, not required. She could have sold this milk plus apple. Not, not, not necessary. Not necessarily true. 
Ganga did not sell any leftover apples. Ganga sold milk and mangoes leftover. This is true. Ganga did not sell any leftover mangoes. No, no, she did sell leftover mangoes. So choice C is true. A and D are definitely not true. B need not be true. C is necessarily true. That's the answer we're looking for. What best can be concluded about the total units of milk the three women had in the beginning? And so, right at the beginning, what do they have? So it's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant question. It takes a lot of time, but let's go step by step. 23 plus 11, 23, let's go one by one. 23 is 11 plus 12. This is definitely a one unit of milk. Whereas mango smoothie or fruit salad may or may not be there. So it is one or two. 21 is 11 plus 10, that is 2. 29 is 19 plus 10, that is 2. 30 is 24 plus 6, 24 is 12 plus 12 plus 6, 12 is smoothie, that is 1. And then what does she throw away? She has leftover 1 milk and 1 mango. So in leftover, there is 1 unit of milk. And so this could be you know, erased just like this, 1 or 2. Lovely. Now let's move to Kaveri. Kaveri made a mixed fruit smoothie. One. Then she made 12 plus 10 banana smoothie and fruit salad. One. Then in R3 she made mixed fruit smoothie plus apple smoothie. Two. In the final R, she might have sold this or this. 22 is 12 plus 10. In which case she would have had one banana smoothie, one. 21 is 11 plus 10 or two. Both are possible. And finally, what does she what does she have left over? Either milk and apple or milk and mango. So one milk definitely left over. That is sitting here. Narmada, nine, 31 is 19 plus 12. So that is one unit. 21 is 11 plus 10. That is two units. 23 is 11 plus 12, that is one unit. 22 comes as 19, which is one unit. And what does she have left over? Mango plus apple, no milk left over. We add all of this up. 1 plus 1, 2, 4, 6, 7 or 8. Add all of this up. 1 plus 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 6 or 7. And this is 1, 3, 4, 5. 7 plus 6 plus 5 is 18 and then it could be one more or two more 18 19 or 20 absolutely brilliant question super challenging uh, the dynamics change based on whether the the, the, the two uh, kind of joker in the pack one is the first thing the 12 bucks could have been from mango smoothie or from fruit salad that we need to keep in mind and the second mixture second thing that we need to worry about we are in r4 did Kaveri go for this 12 plus 10 or 11 plus 10? That's the other place where the variance can come. So 18, 19 or 20. The answer. It is known that leftover units of mangoes were sold during the last... Three leftover units of mangoes were sold during the last business hour of the day. How many apple smoothies were sold during the day? Three leftover mangoes. So this is milk per mango that we know. This is mango and apple that we know. Kaveri should have also sold milk plus mango. So her last number should have been 21 actual sale. So I'm going to modify this. Make this as 21. Make this as 24. Make this as 19. We want to find out how many apple smoothies were there. Apple smoothie is 11. So there's definitely one apple smoothie here. 11 plus 12. One apple smoothie here. 11 plus 10. This is 19 plus 10, no apple smoothie. 12 plus 12, no apple smoothie. None here, none here. 19, no apple smoothie. 22 is 10 plus 12, no apple smoothie. 30 is 19 plus 11, one apple smoothie. 21, in the last hour is 10 plus 11, one more apple smoothie. 31 is 19 plus 12, no apple smoothie. 21 is 10 plus 11, one more. Apple smoothie is a massive hit. 23 is 11 plus 12. One more. 19 is just a mixed fruit smoothie that we won't count. 2 plus 2 plus 2. 6 apple smoothies were totally sold. 
six rupee level units. Uh, research papers. A journal plans to publish 18 research papers written by eight authors A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H in four issues January, April, July, and October. Each of the research papers was written by exactly one of the eight authors, which is nice. Five papers were scheduled in each of the first two issues, four each of the last two issues, five, five, four, four, adding up to 18. Every author wrote at least one paper and at most three papers. So eight into one is eight, eight into three is 24, total is 18. So more should have written three and two. More than two. The total number of papers written by A, D, G, and H was double the total number of papers written by the other four authors. So A, D, G, H, other four is B, C, E, F. So this is 2x, this is x, total is 18, 3x is 6, 18, x is 6, 12 and 6, which is very nice. Because A, D, G, and H, if they together write 12, nobody could have written more than 3. So A, D, G, H, write 3, 3, 3, 3. A nice inference straight away. Brilliant. Four of the authors were from India and two each were from Japan and China. 4, 2, 2, India, Japan, China. Each author belonged to exactly one of the three areas, manufacturing, automation, logistics. So we have authors categorized by country, authors categorized by uh, divisions or departments, areas. Four of the authors were from logistics and two were from automation. That means two more were from manufacturing. As per the journal policy, none of the authors could have more than one paper in any issue of the journal. So A cannot publish three articles in the same issue. Lovely. And then a bunch of condition. F, an Indian author from the logistics area wrote only one paper. It was scheduled in the October issue. A was from automation and did not have a paper scheduled in the October issue. This is going to be tricky to remember all of this and process this. So we need to capture data in some form. Saying so Chan, April, July, October. And manufacturing, automation, logistics, China, Japan, India. 224, 224. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. How many did each of them write? The first inference that we could draw was A, D, G, and H. Together contribute 12 articles or 12 papers, so nobody can do more than three. So A, D, G, H account for three, 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 three. The other four should add up to six. So B, C, E, F, together is six. So it is either one, one, two, two, or one, 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 three. One of these combinations, each of them should have at least one. One, 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 one adds up to four. The two extra could be either two, two, or all set to the same guy, one, 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 three. But this, the 12 is three, 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 that life makes simpler for us. So three, 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 four, A, D, G, and H. Brilliant. Now let's build on this. F, an Indian author from logistics area, wrote only one paper, which is nice. It was scheduled in the October issue. F is in logistics. F is from India and F sits in October. A was from automation, which is nice, and did not have a paper scheduled in the October issue. Not in October. A has published three papers. Nothing in October. This is brilliant. That means A should feature in all three. A, A, A. Right? And A was from automation. None of the Indian authors were from manufacturing. And none of the Japanese or Chinese authors were from automation. So all automation should be from India. So A, sorry, this is automation, should be A. A should sit here also. Right. Let's go step by step. A was from automation and did not have a paper scheduled in the October issue. So A should be here, here and here. C and D, both Chinese authors from different areas, had the same number of papers scheduled. Further, he had papers scheduled in consecutive issues of the journal, but C did not. So we know A, D, G, H. So we know B, C, E, F. They add up to six. C and D are both Chinese authors. Let's put both C and D here. With that, the China part is complete. They are from different areas. That means the Chinese and uh, Japanese authors are not in automation. That means they should be one from manufacturing, one from logistics, C and D. 
for that e had paper scheduled in consecutive issues but c did not first inference e should have had two articles published c should also have two but published so at least two so it should be two two one one and so c had two e had two e had in consecutive issues C had in not consecutive. C did not have in consecutive issues. B from the logistics area had a paper scheduled in the April issue. B is logistics and had something scheduled in April. Nice. Lovely. Let's build on this. None of the Japanese or Chinese authors were from the automation area. That means all automation professors, authors are from India. That means this should be A. A and H were from different countries, but had their papers scheduled in exactly the same issue. This is massive because we have AAA, we can put HHH straight away. B and G belong to the same country, but none of their papers were scheduled in the same issue. We know B published only one. And that was in April. So G should have published in Jan, July and October. So we would AHG, ABH, AHG, FG. So we need to have only one more here, only two more here, two and two here. Right? A, D, H, G, each published three. We can make an inference about D, then we are through. Because that will fill three slots. It will be massively useful. D, a Japanese author from the manufacturing area, so this is D and this is D. Did not have a paper scheduled in the July issue. Brilliant. Nothing in July. So D would come here. D would come here. D would come here. So we need to have only one, 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 one more. We have accounted for B and F. We have accounted for A, D, H, G. We are worrying only about C and D. And brilliant. So we need to have two C's and two E's. But otherwise this is completely filled. We still need to figure this out, but this is filled apart from two C's and two E's. Let's go and attack this. Now we come back here, C and D, both Chinese authors from different areas had the same number of papers scheduled. He had papers scheduled in consecutive issues. It will be Jan and April, April and July, July and October. But C did not. If he had Jan and April, C should have been in these two, not possible. If E had July and October, C should have been in these two, not possible. Our life is simple. E has in April and July, C has in Jan and October. Brilliant. Now C and H belong to different areas. C and E belong to different areas. These two different areas are manufacturing and logistics. C and H, different areas. We don't know where H is from. So we still have to worry about H, which area he is from, which division he is from, which country he is from. B and G belong to the same country. C and A and H belong to different countries. Lovely. So this is massively useful. I'm going to attack this next. B and G belong to the same country. B, G cannot be in China. China is accounted for. They cannot be in Japan. Only two are B, G sit here. Brilliant. So FABG, the Indian contingent is completely filled. This is CE. So Japan should be DH. Now, C and H come from different areas. Both cannot be automation. C and D come from different areas. So we don't know. C and D have to be logistics and manufacturing. C and H have to be logistics and manufacturing. H is from Japan. Yep, between logistics and manufacturing, we need to have that. So E and H have to be together. C has to be in the other part. That's maybe something that we can infer. BG, same country. So we fill this. So H is Japanese, we fill that. So H goes into the logistics part. Because between C and D, one has to be in manufacturing, one has to be in logistics. So there's no room for manufacturing for H. So H has to go here into logistics. 
So final piece of the jigsaw, we need to have C and E going into manufacturing and logistics. So A, B, D is accounted for. So we have C and D sitting here. So G should be here. Is Indian that goes here. A, G, F, B go here, G go here. C and D have to be in one of these two, either here or here. C and H belong to different areas. H is here, so C should be here, E should be here. An absolutely delightful set. Uh, Jan, April, July, October, 5544, we've completed that. This we've completed the grid. How many papers each, and each one has published. This we've done, who's from manufacturing, who's from automation, who's from logistics. We've broken China, Japan, India. We've got the entire grid. Hopefully all the questions should kind of take care of themselves. Let's attack them. What is the correct sequence of number of papers written by B, C, E, G? B is one, C is two, E is two, G is three. One, two, two, three. One, two, two, three, done. Nice. How many papers were written by Indian authors? Indian authors are F, B, G, A. F is one, B is one, G is three, A is three. One plus one plus three plus three, which makes eight. Which of the following statements must be true? Every issue had at least one paper by authors from each country. Every issue had at most two papers from authors from each area. Look at this. Had at least one paper from authors from each country. So countries is F, B, G, A. I think India will feature in all. That's going to be there. Lots. So China, C, E. C, E are there in everything. D, H. D is here. H and D are here. G is here. Sorry, H is here. D is here. So every issue has at least one paper by authors from each country. That we have verified. So statement A is true. Statement 2. Statement B, every issue had at most two papers by authors from each area. So at if this has to be false, we can find three papers from authors from the same area. Anyway, true. So I'm going to attack logistics. Logistics has F, B, H, E. If there's any issue which has F, B, H, E or more than two of these, then we are true. F, B, H, E. B, H, E are sitting here in the April issue. So in the April issue, there are three papers from logistics. So at most two papers, that is wrong. This is wrong. This is true. So only statement A is correct. That's the right answer. Which of the following statements is false? Every issue had exactly one paper by a Chinese author. Chinese authors are C and D, C, E, E, C, exactly one. We did a full round of this. So this is true. Every issue had at least one paper by authors from automation area. Automation is A and G. A, 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 G. Yeah, this is also true. The first three have A, the fourth one has G. The others will also have G, but A and G definitely so it's also, also true. Every issue had exactly two papers by authors from logistics. Logistics is F, B, H. This has B, H and E. So April 5 issue has three papers from logistics, B, H and E. So this is not true. That's the right answer. Every issue had exactly two papers by Indian authors. F, B, H, E. That's interesting. Had exactly two papers by Indian authors. Indian authors F, B, G, A. B and A. F, B, G, A. G and A. F, B, G, A. G and A. F and G. Yeah, that is true. I was surprised that that is, I'm surprised that that is true. It seemed like a complicated thing for exactly two authors, but this is also true. The only statement that is false is statement C. Which of the following statements is false? Exactly one paper by an author from logistics area in the October issue. October issue, logistics is F, B, H, E. Only F is sitting here. This seems to be true. There was exactly one paper by an author from manufacturing area in the April issue. Manufacturing is D and C. April issue has E and D. So exactly one paper from manufacturing in the April issue. That is not correct because D and C, one second, D and C in April issue. That is correct. Not D and D, D and C. 
So only D is featuring there. So this is also true. Exactly two papers by authors from manufacturing issue, manufacturing area in the July issue. July issue has AHGE, manufacturing is DNC. Nothing here. So this one is false. Exactly two papers by authors from manufacturing area in the January issue. DC, yeah, it's also true. A, B and D are two. C is incorrect. C says exactly two papers from manufacturing area in the July issue. The July issue does not have D or C. Zero papers from manufacturing. That is the incorrect one. Choice C. Which of the following is the correct sequence of number of papers by authors from automation, manufacturing and logistic area respectively? Automation is A and G. A and G is 3 plus 3 6. So automation is 6. Then comes manufacturing. Manufacturing is D and C. D is 3, C is 2, fine. Then comes logistics. That should be the remaining. Logistics is F, B, H, E. 1, 1, 3, 3, 8. Sorry. F, F, B, H, E. 1, 1, 3, 2. 1, 1, 3, 2. 2 plus 3, 5 plus 2, 7. Adding up to 18. This seems like it will work. 6, 5, 7 is the right answer. Thank you.